Claire from What Three Words to uh, share her story. Thank you. Um, I love Oli. I've been in Oli. It's very cool. I'd recommend it. Um, so I'm from What Three Words. We're based in London, although we work all over the world. And we have quite a big vision, which is to change the way the world is addressed. So at this show, and anywhere that people talk about mobility, they're talking about vehicles. They're talking about how we can move vehicles more efficiently. They're also talking about how people interact with the places they're going. So how you're moving people from A to B. In urban transportation, that really, really matters, because we want to move them efficiently. And you do see a lot of this, which is meet people wandering around, looking at their phones, because they're not quite sure where they're going. Uh, as we think about the cars of the future, Ollie is definitely one of my favorite examples of this. And we think about these driverless vehicles, we think about what the cars of the future look like in our cities and how they move around our cities. And we also think about the devices that talk to those cars. So I'm thinking about smartwatches and Internet of Things devices. My clicker seems to have stopped working. Uh, but thank you. Uh, so we're thinking about things like smartwatches. So maybe I say to my smartwatch, I want to go for coffee, and it will tell my car where it's meant to take me. So it's thinking about how people interact with their vehicles, with their phones, with how their phones interact with their vehicles. And all of this is great, and it's really exciting. It's really exciting that we can have really multimodal trips. So maybe when my parents come to visit me in London, they take a train, and then they take a, an underground tube, and then they take an Uber to get to my front door. So we're getting much more efficient about how we plan our journeys. But there's a bit of a problem with this, which is that moving from A to B means you really, really need to know where A is, and you really need to know where B is. And unfortunately, that's a particularly big problem if you're talking about autonomy. So in Dubai, for example, Sheikh Mohammed has said he wants 25% of all trips in Dubai to be autonomous by 2030. That's fantastic. It's very, very difficult to keep up with the pace of development. So if I'm getting around Dubai, I have a bit of a problem. And there was an article in The Verge a few, a few months ago which describes this perfectly, which is this caption. The robots don't quite know where we're going. So what that means is, for example, if I say to David, meet me at the Kobo Center at the entrance. Uh, I look that up in Google. I get a pin in the middle of the building. There are, in fact, many entrances to the Kobo Center. How do I know which one I'm going to? I'll probably phone David and say, where are you? And he'll say, I can see a Starbucks. What can you see? And we'll eventually find each other. So this is also true in places like London. If I put into my car, I, I say to my car, take me to Church Road. Well, which of those many church roads in London is my car supposed to take me to? How is the car supposed to know? And in the rest of the world, so not in the US and the UK, where we take for granted that we have pretty, pretty good addressing systems, many parts of the world, in fact, 75% of the world, actually has really poor or inconsistent addresses. Now, this is Saudi Arabia. Google has done a fantastic job of mapping it. Look at all those roads. But there are no names for those roads. So there's no addresses. So there are no addresses there. So how am I supposed to know where B is when I'm moving from A to B? And of course, there are lots of other places like pop-up markets or uh, a spot in a park that you want to meet your friends, or even uh, if you live on a boat in Dubai Marina. There are lots of these places that just don't have addresses. And so we wanted to solve that problem. Now, there is a universal addressing system. It looks a bit like this, uh, latitude, longitude. And it's beautiful. If you're a machine, this is ideal. It's highly accurate, completely unique. The problem is nobody has ever said to me, hey, Claire, let's meet for a drink at 25 degrees, 9 minutes, 40.918 seconds, et cetera. So we wanted to take this and make it human friendly. So what we did is we divided the entire world into a grid of squares. There's 57 trillion of these squares. Each one is three meters by three meters. We're in the US, so I guess 10 foot by 10 foot. And each one has a completely unique address made of three random words. So gazed across like. It's really a conversion of those coordinates. It's much, much easier to say. If I say to you, meet me at gazed across like, it's much, much simpler. So the front, my doorstep in London, the uh, 10 foot square with my doorstep in is slug vines bucket. That's my address. It's completely unique. If I tell you to come there, that's the only place you will end up. So the idea is that words are flexible. They work anywhere. I can say them on the phone. I can put them in a tweet. I can put them in a Facebook message. I can say them over a radio if I'm doing emergency services. Words are really, really flexible, unlike numbers. And they're much harder to get wrong. So we've done the whole world in 14 languages so far. We've got more on the way. Uh, and the idea is, if you're going to a stadium, it means you have an address for every single different entrance to that stadium. It means whether you're telling your taxi to drop you off somewhere in lower Manhattan, you know exactly where that square is. Uh, or even you're just trying to find the front door to your hotel. So we've done this in the whole world. 
we're being built into all kinds of applications. So really, it's a piece of code. You can build it into a sat-nav. You can build it into a head unit of a car. You can build it into a smartwatch. So you can build this in anywhere, and it allows you to route to and from three word addresses. So I could go from Toffrey Branch to Pyramid to Left Clown Pasta, and my, uh, the, the little piece of code will turn that into a coordinate that you can pin on any map. Wherever you are in the world, you can use this technology. This is an example of a taxi company in India. There are women drivers who collect women to keep them safe in Delhi. And the last thing you want to be doing is wandering around lost in Delhi at night if you're a woman uh, and you're feel, feeling unsafe. So these will collect you and drop you off using three word addresses to make sure they always find where you're going. Uh, so you can see here, it, it can be built into anything. And it's just a really, really simple way to communicate really, really accurate location. Now, I talked about autonomy. I'm just going to show you a quick video of one, one example of this in real life. So I mentioned Dubai. They have this really amazing vision for autonomy in Dubai. And uh, they have this fantastic company called Next, who've made these little autonomous pods. Now, if you're expecting your autonomous pod to come to your house and collect you, you need to know for sure it's coming to the right place, because you can't phone it and say, hey, what, what, you're halfway down the street. I'm not sure. What, what can you see? Uh, so this is a little example of what it looks like in real life when you see uh, autonomy and what three words. three words. You can look up your house's address by downloading What Three Words, the app. You can look up the address of anywhere in the world. Um, and th so that's What Three Words. I'm now going to hand over to Andy from Navia.